Angels Journal Life. Hello and welcome to the Rangers Journal. My name is Kai Watson and today we're going to look at five central midfielders I think Rangers could sign this summer. We have a mixture of number sixes, number eights, players that can play both positions, some players that can even play further forward as a 10. I think the midfield is an area that we really need to look to improve, particularly in number six. I think if we have a good number six next to Connor Barron who can play as an eight and then move Diamandé further forward, I think that's a really exciting prospect. So I've looked at some players that can fill that position, some players that can play, like I said, as the eight. Kind of combination players that can play both or players that can play further forward as like a more offensive eight or a number 10. So like I say, we've got five players on the list, so let's get started. First player we're going to look at is one that was actually linked to Rangers early in the summer before the Olympics. Usama Tarjaleen, again sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly, he's a 22-year-old Moroccan, six foot two, currently plays for La Havre. Transfer market having valued at 2 million, look at his key stats from last season. 14 appearances, 12 from the start, he did have a bit of an injury that kept him out for a wee bit last season, but nothing that makes him injury prone or anything that seems to be a recurring issue. 85.8% pass accuracy, 54.2% long ball accuracy, 0.7 chances created per 90, 50% dribble success per 90, 1.74 interceptions per 90, 5.93 recoveries per 90, 47.8 tackles 1 per 90, and 54.7% duels 1. Again, he's a player that's been very impressive in League One for a couple of years now. He can play as a number six, can play as a number eight. He's not the most offensive player, but he's really good driving the ball forward. He also ranks really high, highly for progressive passes. There's a couple of stats that I'm going to go through just now. So this is all from the AMB. So 97% for forward passes, 94% for dual win rate, 93% for progressive passes, 85% for defensive actions, and then versus top five league under 23 midfielders per 90, second for forward passes, second for offensive duels, one, third for progressive passes, and six for passes to the final third. It just shows you the kind of player we're looking at and the quality they has. He also massively impressed in the Olympics, which is something that makes me think we maybe should have went in for him if we were going and the money was there before the Olympics started. I think he was going to get a lot of attention because that Moroccan side was very impressive. Just looking at some of his stats per 90, like he played five matches, Fortmore gave him a rating of 7.36, 94% pass accuracy, 68.2% long ball accuracy, low in the chances created at 0.44 per 90, but 100% dribble success and 0.65 attempts per 90, 90 touches per game filled almost two times per game, 75% tackles won, 76.3% duels won, 83.3% aerial duels won, 5.67 recoveries, 1.53 interceptions, all those stats per 90 over five games and he played 413 minutes. Shows how impressive a player he is, he's a brilliant ball carrier, good at passing the ball forward. He's not going to be the player that makes the last kind of incisive pass, the player that's going to split the defenders and put the striker through, but he is going to split the midfield and get us going forward. I think he's a very exciting talent, he's a good age. It just depends how much that performance at the Olympics has shot his value up. Like transfer market did have him valued at $2 million, but I would imagine that's going up just now. He's going into the last year of his deal, so Lahar, if they can't get him to sign a new contract, they're obviously going to look to sell. So they can maximise the money they're getting for him. Really exciting player. He's tall, strong, like I say, really good on the ball. The dual numbers, the reading of the game are excellent. I think he's a player that has the tools to go all the way to the top. And I think he showed that at the Olympics. And if you've seen any of the footage of him last season as well, a really exciting player. And I honestly think it's one of the best signings we can make for the position. It just all depends on the fee we're looking at. If we can get him for a decent price that's... Still going to allow us to improve other positions, even if that's bringing loan moves in with options to buy, getting free agents in, or still being able to spend more elsewhere. I think he's a player we really should be looking at. Apparently we have already, because it was Lequeep that kind of reported our interest, so they're obviously a very good source in French football. So if that's still the case, I can't imagine we'd have lost interest. I think it would just come down to the fee that they're looking for. And again, really exciting player and one I would love us to go for. Next player up is one I also think is really exciting. So, check the ass, 24 years old, he's Senegalese, 6 foot 2 again, plays for young boys, transfer mark having valued at 2.7 million. 30 appearances last season, 22 from the start, he got 4 assists, 82.6% pass accuracy, 50% long ball accuracy, 70.4% dribble success, fell 1.17 times per 90, 6.59 recoveries per 90, 1.9 interceptions per 90, and 55.7% duels won. 
Another one that's very good playing as a six, he can also play as an eight. He's not as progressive a player as Tarjolin, but he is, again, decent going forward. He's a good passer of the ball, breaks up the play, reads the game very well. He's tall, he's strong. I think he's exactly what we need as a number six, especially next to someone with Connor Barn with so much energy. Nias has energy as well. He's athletic, got good pace. Like I say, he's very strong. Six foot two, that kind of imposing figure that we've we've not really had in that position. I think, honestly, it's what we need. Just need a big player in there that's going to break up the play, win the ball back and get the ball forward. It's, like I say, something that we've lacked. I think if you have that in the midfield next to Baron and Diamandin, then it's going to be a really good trio. So it's something I think we need to focus on. It's one of the kind of main targets, I think, for me, that in centre half. I think getting a good number six in there that can break up the play, win the ball, get it moving forward and let players like Baron, Diamande and whoever we've got in the wing kind of do the rest of the work to create those chances and get goal scoring opportunities. I think Nias is a brilliant option for that. He was linked to like a £10 million move to Luton in January. That obviously never transpired. I don't know what young boys are looking for now. Transfer market obviously haven't valued under £3 million, but I think you're looking somewhere around £5-6 million potentially for him. But again, he's a good age. He's only 24. I think he's ready to take the next step. And hopefully that's the Rangers because he's a really exciting player and the exact type of profile, in my opinion, I think we need in the midfield. Now we're going to look at some different midfielders and ones we haven't been linked to yet, unfortunately. But we're going to start with Isaac Price, 20 years old. He's Northern Irish, 5 foot 10, currently plays for Standard Liège. We were linked to him when he was at Everton before he went to Belgium. It was a really interesting career move going there and I think he's done pretty well. Trust Mark Gavin valued at 1.7 million. Look at his starts for last season. 37 appearances, 25 from the start. Got a goal, two assists. 76.3% pass accuracy, 53.8% long ball accuracy. Just under one chance created per 90. 45.9% dribble success, 74% tackles won. 6.34 recoveries per 90. And 52.6% duels When You can see with those last three numbers there, the type of player he is, he's high energy, loves to get stuck in, breaks up the play. He's now... I feel Northern Ireland at the national. I think he has 12 caps. He's been playing regularly in Belgium. Again, he took the step when he left Everton to go and get first team football and I massively respect any player that does that. It kind of shows good character, I think, and the ability to go and try something different. And he was linked to move with West Brom and the rumoured fee was only around £2 million for a 20-year-old that came through a Premier League academy, has experience in the Pro League, he's a full international now. In what he offers in the game, he can play as a 6, he can play as an 8. I wouldn't play him as far forward as a 10. I don't think his creativity is good enough to play in that position. But like I say, buzzes around the park, got a lot of energy, good on the ball. The pass accuracy is maybe lower than you would think, but he does try some of those more risky passes at this type of thing I've spoke about with the likes of Connor Barham, the likes of Lennon Miller, the players that try those passes to fire through the lines. It doesn't always come off, but it's one of those things that he's going to improve as he gets old, as he gets more experience, he's going to know when to play those passes and when not because he's only 20 years old and he's already got a lot of experience for being that young I just think he's if it's 2 million as well it's an absolute bargain if we're going to go with the player trading model looking at positions that we need players of that age that again like I say have got good experience at a good level playing in Belgium and internationally as well when he's came through a Premier League academy I just think Isaac Price if he's available for 2 million it's an absolute no brainer for I think most clubs that are looking for a player that's got high energy that can win the ball, break up the play and get the ball moving forward. I just don't see how you can turn that kind of value down. I think there is a lot of value we've missed out this summer already. A few players have been linked that have went for decent fees. I think this is one we've not been linked with, but I think it's probably one we should be looking at. We were linked previously, like I said, before he went to Standard Liège. So hopefully he's one that's still on the radar and one the club should be checking out. Now we're going to look at a more defensive player in Yuran Baslimi. 24 years old, he's Swiss, 5 foot 10, currently plays for Lugano, been playing the Champions League recently. Transfer like having valued at 2.1 million. Look at some of his key stats from last season. 34 appearances, 28 starts, 7 goals, 7 assists, 86% pass accuracy, 54.8% long ball accuracy, 1.68 chance of created per 90, 57.4% dribble success, 50% tackles won, 5.89 recoveries, and 51.2% duels won. That radar on the right-hand side is lovely for an attacking midfielder, so let's have a look at that. Chances created is in the 89th percentile, 83rd for touches, 88 for short attempts, 94 for goals, 
You can obviously see he's quite low in the defensive actions, but the numbers aren't actually that bad. Just in isolation that compared to other players in the league, they're a bit lower. So I think he obviously can play as a 10, you can see from the numbers there, but I think he'd be really good as a more offensive number 8. 7 goals and 7 assists and 28 starts, 34 total appearances. Playing in Switzerland is a good number, and like I say, he's had experience playing in the Champions League recently, and he is a Swiss international. He actually scored in the first leg of the Champions League for Lugano when they played for Nebaccio when they played in Switzerland. And interestingly, they've obviously been knocked out in the Europa League. They play Partizan Belgrade in the Europa League, obviously the team that Dynamo Kiev dispatched, so that's quite an interesting link there. But Bislimi's just a great attacking option in the midfield. He's good at driving the ball forward, takes shots from distance, a very creative player. And I think he's a different option in there. He's not what we have if we play a six next to Conor Barron. He's a different type of player for Conor Barron. You're going to need the solo number six to do a lot of the defensive work while he gets to kind of push up, which could be good for league games that we're struggling to break the opponents down, that you have that player playing high up the part that can link with the number 10 and kind of move into spaces, create chances and good goal-scoring opportunities. It's something I don't think we have. It's not exactly the Scott Arfield type of arriving at the box late, but he's just a player that can create from deep and help link with the number 10, the striker and the wingers. Like I say, it's an option I don't think we have. And it's one I think could be really useful in the league when we're struggling to break opponents down, particularly playing at home, which obviously will be at Hamden and then we were back at Ibrox. It's just an option that we don't have in the squad and one I think would be really interesting to add. Last player we're going to look at is a really exciting all round midfielder in Eo Tanaka. 25 years old, he's Japanese, 5 foot 11, currently plays for Fortuna Dusseldorf. Again, if you watched the video we done last week in the number 10, he plays with the same side as Shinta Apple Camp, two very exciting players. Transfer market up value at 3.4 million. Looking at his key stats, so in 30 appearances, 24 from the start, got 7 goals and 3 assists. 88.5% pass accuracy, 75.5% long ball accuracy, 0.56 chances created per 90, 54.5% dribble success, 71.8% tackles won, 6.86 recoveries per 90, and 48.9% duels won. Just an overall brilliant midfielder. He can do all the roles in the midfield. He can play as a 6, he can play as an 8, he can play as an offensive 8, could also push him as far up as a 10. Just really good on the ball, holds the ball very well, makes smart passes, a really intelligent footballer, which isn't something you always see, especially not in Rangers midfield in recent years. We've not always had players that have that football and brain. Like I know Mohamed Diamandé gets a lot of criticism, but one thing you can't take away from him is he's a very intelligent footballer. He's got a really good football and brain. He knows where to be, he knows where his teammates should be. It's not always his fault that the players and where he thinks he should be, and where we can kind of have the most impact. You get that with Tanaka, also looking at some of his percentiles as well. 87% for touches, 80% for short attempts, 98% for goals, and 36% for defensive actions as well. It's impressive considering the work that he gets in. He's just the type of player, kind of similar to Conor Barron, but I think he's better as a 6 than Barron would be. I think Barron is more as an 8, even though he's been used as a 6 recently. I think Barron likes to burst forward, which he's not been able to do recently and play, obviously, those long switches from deep. But Tanaka will give you high energy. It gets stuck in. Energy is something we really need to add to the midfield, and I think you get that in abundance with Tanaka. He can be everywhere. He'll cover every single blade of grass in the park, give you 100% every game, which is something we've not always had again in recent years. Just need the energy to that midfield, and it's something that's been added with Conor Barron, but I still think we need more whether it's from another 6, whether it's from an 8 or the number 10 that gets added as well. We still need more energy in that midfield and I really hope we get it towards the end of the transfer window. But that's the last player we're going to look at today. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any suggestions of other players to cover, leave them in the comments down below. You can potentially have a look at them and do another video in specific positions or areas of the pitch. So just give me some thoughts and give me some suggestions and We'll see what we can do. But if you enjoy the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe and have a great day.